Uh oh. Ugh. Um. Oh no! Goodness, that's not good at all. the saga of the Rallycross MR2. In this episode, I aim to improve one of the most often overlooked aspects of an SCCA Rallycross car, and that is the interior of the car, or the office, as I like to call it, which is comprised of both seating surfaces and driver controls. Now, the cockpit of the AW11 MR2 is already a pretty nice place to operate from, but this particular one suffers from a few shortcomings. And with minimal effort, hopefully we can bring it around from a 4 out of 10 to maybe at least a 7-ish? Now, I thought that this would be a day of work. I'd make some quick improvements, and we would be on our way to race day. However, there's a lot of footage here, and I think maybe 10 minutes of it is useful. I can't decide which 10, so uh, instead of showing you all 50 of it, which you don't seem to like, um, the last video, really long, and uh, I don't think folks uh, watched it at all. Thanks. You know, it only takes, I don't know, 60 hours to make a 30 minute video. It seems like it takes forever. and. And then you don't watch it. I mean, I don't want to hate on you, but watch the videos. Like it, subscribe, please. In this first video, we're going to fix uh, the passenger side window that's cracked open and won't close. And then we're going to put in a new Sparco steering wheel and then also attempt to put in the Corbo seat and we'll see how that goes. Not well. In the next video, we're gonna put in a harness bar and do some other sexy upgrades to that interior. So, like I said, like and subscribe, click the bell, maybe, you know, put it on your calendar to check for new videos. I don't know, but just watch them because there's cool stuff coming. It's coming. To kick this off, the passenger window was in a sad, sad state. It's misaligned and left a huge gap when the door was closed. Snow, leaves, bats, you name it. They're all coming in through this hole, but the rain is the worst culprit. Occasionally, I may have a passenger, and no one wants a textbook case of wet ass. Wet, wet ass. ass. So I need to crawl into the inner depths of the door and figure out why this glass doesn't seal. We begin this adventure to fix the passenger door glass, on the driver's side, of course. Join me as I remove the door card and peer into the guts of the door to see things assembled as they are supposed to be. Then we can apply those learnings to the window that needs a fixin'. Driver's side, door card removal, AW11 MR2. Yep. Or I could do that. I thought for sure this was gonna be a video of me destroying this door card, but it turns out I can actually get it off of here without breaking it. Hell has been given. Look at that, for sale. One clean, unbroken AW11 MR2 door card. You know, so if you want that, it'll be right here. Come and get it. After digging my way in, I found that there were two very important stoppers in the front and rear of the door that are in place to keep the glass from coming up too far and getting all wonka do. These weren't bolted into the passenger side, but they were rattling around in the bottom of the door. It seems that the passenger glass was broken at some point and the process of replacing it wasn't taken very seriously. So I put the bumpers back in, then hot wired the motor to get the window to move up and down the track since the window switch for that door probably hasn't worked since the 90s. That's up. It's pressed in as hard as it can be as of right now. Let's get out and check and see how good it looks. After some trial and error, up and downs, opens and closes, the window managed to seat in its seal, thereby eliminating all future water leaks in the MR2. Not gonna be any more water leaking into this car right here, except for through the big holes in the roof. But. There will be more on that later. For now, we can mark this job off the list and move on to the saga of seating. It is such a dumb thing, but my brain tells me that 
If I have a Corbo seat to use, which I do have in my previous rally car, the Corolla FX16. Tasty, tasty Corbo. I must use that seat. And why shouldn't I? When Corbo makes brackets that just bolt in for seemingly any car ever, then all that should be standing between me and a comfy, supportive racing bucket in my MR2 is just money. Where do I click buy now? Give it, take my money. Well, this is a story about when you do that, you spend the money to save the hassle and the time that sometimes you get even more hassle and you get nearly nowhere. So the first task was to remove the seat and bracket from the FX16 and replace the bracket on the seat with the brand new MR2 specific bracket from Corbeau. No problems there. It's great working with brackets made by the seat manufacturer because you know everything between the bracket and the seat at least is going to fit. All right, we'll get this seat out of here. Ain't but one way to do it. And that's right on top of your head. After removing the stock seat from the MR2, the trouble began. Moment of truth here. Let's see if this one goes in how we think it will. Uh-oh. Ugh. Um. Oh no, goodness, that's not good at all. Three out of the four holes in the Corbeau bracket that are meant for bolting the bracket to the floor of the car lined up perfectly, but the right rear hole wasn't even close. In fact, it was about three quarters of an inch off. So after much deliberating, thinking, thinking, and procrastinating and then thinking a little bit more, I emailed Corbeau and I found out that their measurements are correct on the bracket that I received per their specifications in their database. But those measurements don't match the measurements on the floor of the car. The holes are not in the same place that they claim to. Here's a bit of math or numbers that I filmed at the time to explain it. My measurement 14 and 1 8. Corbeau's measurement, 14 and 5 sixteenths, a little bit over a quarter. Seems still too long from my measurement. And then the actual bracket itself is 14 and 5 eighths. Now I can't be the first person to have complained about this if they have always had the wrong measurements. I don't think that my 87 MR2 is like highly modified and different from all the other 80s MR2s that have ever received Corbo seats. The floor of my car is very much stock. Their brackets are supposed to fit the stock mounting points and they don't. The other problem is that I didn't fit in the car with this seat on the Corbo brackets and sliders. There's a solid six inches of space left behind the seat. Corbo does sell slider extenders that would let the seat go back further, but I believe they would only allow it to move another three inches or so, and that would leave a whole three inches of wasted space. I have long legs and a short torso. I need to be back from the wheel, and I need the wheel to kind of come to me. More importantly, the bracket and slider combo is way too tall, so my head with the helmet on is right on the roof, just banging around. Now, I know what you're saying. It's exactly what Ryan said. Well, what I do, and this is my Ryan impression, what I do is just bolt them. I don't know, he doesn't sound like this at all. I just bolt them seats right to the floor, right where I need them. Because it's race car, that's race car stuff. Apparently Ryan is Colonel Sanders now. Well, I want these sliders to work in the car because I owe a lot of people rides at Rallycross. And by that, I mean co-drives. I've been fortunate enough to co-drive a lot of different cars myself, and on any given race day, at any given moment, I want someone else of any given size to be able to hop in and drive my car because I gotta pay that back. Stay off these cones, stay off these cones. And plus, if somebody's car breaks down or anything like that, anybody in my class, I always wanna have a seat open for anybody to be able to hop in and finish their runs out in a, in a car that works. I don't wanna bolt this thing straight to the floor. We can't do that. Now back to the point. I talked to Corbo some more, and I told them that I'd be more than willing to modify the bracket myself if I could keep it and they could you know, give me my money back. And they said they would give me, graciously said they would give me a 20% discount to do so. That's admirable, but not for a bracket that literally does not work in the car as advertised. I understand I could drill the hole, but then I still got the height issue and all the other stuff to figure out. And it was like $150 to buy this bracket and have it shipped. So I made the call. I told Corbo that I was just gonna ship this whole thing back and get my full refund because it does not work for me. So my thought was that I would move forward with mounting sliders directly to the floor. Not the seat, but sliders. 
Whether that was through welding them or nut certs in the floor, some sort of extra reinforcement, something of that nature, I'd get them directly on the floor and then have them bolted to the bottom of the seats. But then I thought, what about side brackets? Corbeau seats, just like other racing seats, have mounting spots on the side as well as the bottom. And then you can put brackets on those mounting points and then those brackets can have sliders on the bottom. So this is all sort of thinking lower height overall, still maintain a slider. Sounds right. I purchased a set of OMP sliders from Amazon and then I found some on Facebook Marketplace as well. And I was like, well, I can just go and grab those and they'll work and then I can send back the OMP ones because these ones were way cheaper and it was for all four. So these units that I found on Facebook Marketplace, they were for a S13 240SX and me not understanding anything about brackets, I thought they're all the same. They'll all just kind of bolt to the side of the seat and then go straight down. Well, this is this is what you got for an S13. The slider's missing off of this one, but this would be, you know, how they roughly how they'd be. I think these are actually two of the same ones, but you get the drift. They they either come way in or I think they're actually meant to go way way out like that because apparently the seat base on a 240SX is really really wide. So I tried to play around with them, flipping them, angling them, changing them, doing all sorts of stuff, and they just weren't gonna work. And it was about that time that the OMP sliders showed up from Amazon, and they were much more like what I was expecting. Being far more universal in nature, they allowed me to mock up a little situation where I had the brackets the right distance apart without the seat in between, so I could set the whole thing in the car and then either weld it down or bolt it down. You know, who knows? So I put it in the car and I started to see how it was going to have to be welded, mounted, whatever, and it was just going to be a gigantic pain, a huge pain to do all this work. So luckily, you know, I have just enough fabrication skills to get this job done. Eh, the right way, as I said. And that right way is we're just going to go ahead and put this factory seat back right where it came from, because, um, you know, if it fits and I fit in it with my helmet on, then this is the right seat for the job. And that's what the car is going to run with for now, because I've already spent as much money on auxiliary bracketry as I did on the original Corbeau, so I am done throwing money at this problem for now. But believe me, I'm going to figure out how to mount this Corbeau. This Corbeau! in the car. It can't happen right now though, because as I mentioned, we have a race coming up. This car's gotta go racing. That takes precedence. There's far more important things that need to be done before that race occurs, and this seat is not one of them. So what I've done instead is contacted my buddies at Techno Toy and ordered up a harness bar that will bolt into the back behind the seats here. And I've got a nice race quip harness with a cam lock buckle, and that should do the job of holding me in place in the stock seat to take up the slack for the missing Corbeau. No, the interior won't look quite as cool and I won't feel quite as good about it. And we can't discount that feeling, the feeling that you are one with the car. It is your space designed by you and it's not just some hunk of crap that you hauled home to be your new race car. To that end, I also ordered a little something else from Techno Toy that'll really class up the joint. More about that in another episode like and subscribe click that bell but for now we're going to move on to driver input <sighs> the wheel that was in the car is some cheap ebay amazon special on an equally cheap hub and the shift knob is out of an audi which is inconceivable no german part should be in this car nine so these things need to be improved for the toyota feng shui of it all I have a beautiful Sparco wheel that I put in the FX16 just last year, so I went to the task of removing that and putting it on the MR2. I played around with a horn button and actually got it working, but then I realized I had to take a lot of stuff back apart to realign the wheel, and I left the horn button out. You know what? Horn later. We don't need a horn, it's a race car. Race cars, race cars don't need slider seats, and they don't need horns. Now the wheel was in, and the shift knob was an even easier fix. I pulled the stock knob from the FX16 off the shelf and screwed that sucker on there. Now the overall driver grip with both hands is much more Toyota-like, and the all-around tactile feel of the car has been drastically improved. The window that we fixed, you could say that that isn't tactile, but again, I submit to you that if water gets in the car and you sit down on the wet seat, you got a bad case of wet ass. 
That's for my buddy Brian. There was also some assorted cleanup of the floor and of the insides of the doors to get rid of moldy, loose change and broken glass. It's just less rattly and icky overall now. So that's it for this episode. Small improvements with a big feel. Next time we'll go over the legitimate repairs and basic maintenance required to get this beast ready to rumble along with an install guide of those extra special goodies from Techno Toy Tuning. After that, hopefully the next video will be some dirt and or mud flinging action. I am really looking forward to this season. I have awesome people to compete with in the Kansas City region modified rear wheel drive class. All good friends and very fast friends. So hopefully the little, not so little at the moment, RX AW11 can keep up. So stay tuned and we will see you next time. I'm still over here. You knew, you knew I was still over here. Click on one of these things. It's probably here, maybe here-ish, something like that. And watch another video, please. And thank you.